Hi everyone, my name is Grace and today I'm going to talk to you about tensor processing units, both their history and their applications. So Google announced its tensor processing unit, TPU for short, in May of 2016 as a custom application specific integrated circuit for machine learning. It was built to be compatible with Google's TensorFlow project, which is an open source software library for machine learning across a range of tasks. It can build and train neural networks to detect and decipher correlations in a manner that is analogous to patterns in human reasoning. Some of its most widely publicized uses include RankBrain, which is Google's machine learning AI system that powers its search engine, Google Maps, where it's used to improve the accuracy of results, for example, reading street numbers, and in AlphaGo, which is a program developed by DeepMind to play Go. And it actually defeated world champion Lee Sotol in March of 2016. Um, as a side note, DeepMind is a British AI company which was acquired by Google in 2014. To really understand just how exciting TPUs are, however, we're going to need a little bit of background, which is why I'm going to give you a brief overview of both CPUs and GPUs, both of which are types of electronic circuitry used in computer programs. CPUs, which you see here, are the electronic circuitry within a computer that carries out the instructions of a computer program by performing basic arithmetic, logical, control, and input-output operations. They came into widespread use in the 1950s and 60s, and due to their configuration, namely limited storage capabilities and, at least initially, relative flexibility, were, they were suited most to serial and linear, that is to say, step-by-step -step processes. The GPU, or Graphics Processing Unit, was a more specialized electronic circuit designed to rapidly manipulate and alter memory to accelerate the creation and display of images. The image you see here on the top right is the GeForce 256, which was released in 1999 by NVIDIA and marketed as the first GPU. Some of its uses include, as you can see, texture mapping, which again is very useful for video games, what is called embarrassingly or alternatively pleasingly parallel problems, and in 2005, GPGUs began to be used for training convolutional networks. And the key point here is that they were used to run slightly more heavy duty in terms of both space and energy parallel processes. As machine learning and neural networks started becoming more popular, however, the need for something that could handle incredibly large amounts of data and complex processes, and to do both of those things quickly, arose. Writ large, neural networks are systems inspired by biological structures, and in particular, the brain. They learn, that is to say, progressively improve performance to do tasks, generally by considering examples during a training period in which both the input and output are provided to the system. After it has been configured to a sufficient degree of accuracy through these supervised methods, only an input is given to the system, which then provides its own output to be compared to the expected results. An artificial ne neural network is based on a collection of connected units called artificial neurons, which are analogous to the axons in the brain. These node-like structures generally have an internal state that is represented by real numbers, typically zero, which you can think of as off, and one, which is on. This activation of a neuron is handled by an activation function, which takes in information from the upstream neuron and determines whether or not it exceeds a given threshold, like a biological action potential in the cells. Only if the aggregate information passes this threshold will information be passed downstream. Each connection, or synapse, between neurons can transmit a signal to another neuron. However, depending on the determined weight or relative importance of this link, only a certain percentage of information will be sent downstream. This weight is configured to improve accuracy as learning proceeds through a process called backpropagation, which will then increase or decrease the strength of the signal that it sends downstream. And typically, neurons and their synapses are organized in layers. So different layers may perform different kinds of transformations on their inputs, and signals travel from the first or input layer to the last or output layer, possibly after traversing the layers multiple times. So I'm going to show you an example here, which is training a neural network to classify a data point as blue or orange based on a training data set. And this example is from the TensorFlow Playground, which is one of Google's projects that I mentioned before. Um, you can see the neurons here, which are the squares, the synapses, which are the orange and blue threads, the layers, which are the three hidden layers, the input on the left, and the output on the right. In this example, the data points in the output are represented by small circles. And in the hidden layers, the lines are colored by the weights of the connections between the neurons. So blue shows a positive weight, which means that the network is using that output of the neuron and an orange line shows that the network is assigning a negative weight. In the output layer, the dots are orange or blue depending on their original values. The background color shows what the network is predicting for a particular area, and the intensity of the color shows how confident that prediction is. 
So the process of running a trained neural network to classify data with labels or estimate some missing or future gap values is called inference. For inference, each neuron in a neural network does the following calculations. So you multiply the input data by the weights to represent the signal strength. You add the results to aggregate the neuron state into a single value. You, act apply, you apply an activation function to modulate that ar artificial neuron's activity. So I'm going to show you um, in, an, in a quick example of what this looks like in real time here, or as it happens. So this is an example on the TensorFlow playground. It's the same one that we saw on the slide. As you can see here, there's no training been done. But if we press play, you can see the progress on the right-hand side with the training loss getting smaller and smaller. And eventually, that accuracy will be the 0 0.001 that we saw on this slide. So as you can imagine, however, this takes um, a, huge, a huge amount of computational power. Oh, let me start this again. Sorry, one second. There we go. So it's a huge, huge amount of computation. And this is actually where the tensor processing unit comes in. This is what it was built for. And the image on the left here is Google's first tensor processing unit which is on a printed circuit board. And the image on the right are TPUs housed inside a Google data center. And these actually are reputedly the uh, server racks with TPUs that were used in the 2016 AlphaGo games. TPUs implement a process called quantization, which uses an 8-bit integer to approximate a value between a preset minimum and maximum value. So this comprises a whole range of values into a single one. And this is ideal in terms of spatial optimization and reduced ener energy consumption. Complex instruction set computing, or CISC, design focuses on implementing high-level instructions that run more complex tasks with each instruction. So this is opposed to the reduction instru reduced instruction set computer, or RISC, design style, which is implemented in most CPUs and GPUs. With RISC, the focus is to define simple instructions and to execute them as quickly as possible. Typical RISC processors provide instructions for simple calculations, such as multiplying or adding numbers. And these are called scalar processors, as they process a single or scalar operation with each instruction. In contrast, TPUs have a matrix processor, which processes hundreds of thousands of matrix operations in a single clock cycle. And you can think of this as printing an entire document at once, rather than word by word or line by line. And there was actually a second generation of TPUs released in May of this year. They're called cloud TPUs and they can both run and train neural networks. They include a custom network that allows for the construction of machine learning, um, quote unquote, supercomputers, which are called TPU pods. So this is incredibly exciting, but the question, of course, is where do we go next? And I don't have answers, obviously, but I do want to draw attention to some emerging patterns and their associated questions. As we've seen in the progression from CPUs to GPUs and now to TPUs, there has been a trend towards favoring parallelization of processes extending storage space, and increasing complexity and interdependence of pieces, both in form and function. So questions that can be raised by these patterns include those of implementation. How can we implement TPUs in the best way possible? How will they change our strategies of approach to a particular problem? Will we start to prioritize a brute force approach now that we have almost unlimited speed and storage, or will we continue to seek efficiency? At what point does one of those things become more valuable than the other? And of course, TPUs engage with Moore's law, which I will let you look up more later if you want. But essentially, it's that as time and technology have proceeded, we tend to pack more and more information or more and more structures inside of a smaller and smaller space. So that's like an exponential growth curve. And the question is, what is the limit to this, um, what is this, the limit to this trend? And finally, do we even properly understand what TPUs can do? And I would argue that we don't, because um, we don't understand what the brain does either. And neural networks are mod uh, modeled on the brain, and TPUs are designed to work with neural networks. So if you want to learn more about these things, I have some resources up. The top one is the TensorFlow project, um, the cloud TPU, the AlphaGo information. And these are articles and other links that I used while researching this presentation, and they were all extremely informative. So that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much.